welcome to the MPS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I have seen the rusty tools at the Ponyville Hospital, and I am intrigued. Uh, don't you go... Uh, what's that thing called, like... Uh, Lockjaw, is it? If you use the rusty tools on there, or you get cut with a rusty something? Uh, I believe that's more of a tetanus shot sort of deal. Yeah, tetanus. Yeah, yeah, tetanus too, yeah. Yeah, they ain't safe, yo. They ain't safe, but, uh, but if you have questionable judgment, you might say, ooh, that looks intriguing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now. Uh, but anywho, also joining us finally is Sapphire Heart Songs. My name isn't Sapphire. My my name is Fernando. What are you talking about, Norman? Who is the Sapphire Heartswing person? A uh, sleepyhead. Yes. Uh, let me let me retract that again. <clears throat> and today, also joining us is Sleepyhead. How dare you lie to me, Norman? It's Sapphire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. But anywho, in today's episode, we are going to review, finally, after a long hiatus of reviewing Pony episodes, Season 6, Episode 23, Where the Apple Lies, written by Dave Rapp. And, well, in this episode, Applejack shares the embarrassing story of how she came to value honesty after her lies almost jeopardized the farm's livelihood. So, yeah, in this episode, we get to see Applejack lie. A lot. And Discord didn't have to be involved. <laughs> Guess what it got. So, what can we say about this episode? First impressions are in order, I think. So, Silver, what do you think, man? Well, season six was not kind to Applejack. I mean, she had one of the most ho-hum episodes in Applejack's day off. Which did not show her in a negative light, it's just that a lot of people were just yawning. This one was a lot more fun because we got to see a very different side to Applejack and to Big Macintosh. In fact, that's the funny thing throughout season six. The Apples had like this really awesome stuff going on, but it was always in the background, like the photo of Big Mac hiding from a monster. So getting to see their history was a lot of fun. Uh, although the funniest part of it was Filthy Rich's presentation and how really nice he is. Lately, between the comics and Equestria Girls, we're supposed to think, oh, that rich so-and-so, we don't like him. But it's like, ah, no, this guy's actually a pretty decent fella. I have to agree with you on that one there, too, because over here, we don't see the money-grubbing, greedy pony. To me, I see him mostly in the episodes as really savvy and business-minded, and he always keeps his end of the deal. But then you see him in something like Legend of Everfree, and you're like, oh, you rich knigget, I blow my nose at you. I thought in your general <laughs> direction. Now, now go away, or I will taunt you a second time. <laughs> oh, boys. Sappy, what about you? Uh, I'm kind of iffy on this episode. I'm not really a big fan of the liar reveal trope. People ah, know what that is. You're, you're with the nostalgia critic. Yeah, I don't know. I've always found that type of trope tedious, and it's annoying. Like, you already know what's going to happen. The only time I've ever seen the liar reveal trope work was in The Road to El Dorado, when they never even revealed that they were lying to the people. That was literally the only Mm. movie where it works, because it doesn't follow the normal tropes of the liar reveal trope. What a twist. Anyways, on the episode... It is a good concept. I mean, Applejack telling her sister you shouldn't lie because I've done it before. It's not a good thing. I actually kind of like it that she tries to tell, you know, Applejack or Apple Bloom, like, what happens if you do lie. Although, it would have been much better if instead of talking about it, they went back to Filthy Rich and Ori get the stuff back. Well, he he came back to them, which... Well, more on that as we talk about the events. But the... All right, I only saw the episode once, sorry. <laughs> I, I saw it once because I didn't want to rewatch it. That's I didn't like it that much. Ah. <laughs> All right, then. And as for me, um, yeah, I'm just happy on this one. The liar reveal trope is kind of a tiresome one. When done right, it's interesting. And I think... The only one that I kind of enjoy was 
in Liar Liar, starring Jim Carrey, where <laughs> uh, in that episode he cannot lie, but he has to lie because he's a lawyer. Ha ha ha! Poor him. But other than that, in this episode, I don't know. Um, I do like how they go into the backstory of how, well, Applejack was trying to be really innovative and f- get rich. And how Big Mac has always all these sort of ideas, but never want to listen to anyone about them. Like he, everything must be his way. And eh, well, <laughs> it's interesting. It's interesting. And finally, we get to see uh, Spoiled Milk. Yep, but we get we get her name, which means that Rich is actually a surname, and that likely Apple is a surname. So her name might be Applejack Apple, Big Macintosh Apple, Granny Smith Apple, Apple Bloom Apple. <laughs> yeah, you do get filthy rich, and then his grandpa was stinking rich. Yeah, and now spoiled milk uh, married into the line. Ergo, she became spoiled rich. Mm-hmm. And then Diamond Tiara rich. Oh, yeah. I, I think she married into it not just for the you know sake of getting his money. I think he also she also married um you know a uh, filthy rich or is it filthy rich? What? Yes. I can't remember. Uh-huh. Anyways. Yeah, filthy. I, I think she also did just to get away from that stupid name. Who names their child spoiled <laughs> milk? Equestrians are so cruel. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, but anywho, before we trample all over this episode with our thoughts, uh, let's go and review this episode. So if you have not seen, it's been a while since we did this. I'm guessing you guys already have seen it. But as per usual, if you haven't, please go watch it first and then come back here. So, spoilers will be in 3, 2, 1. Rosebud is the sleigh! back! <laughs> uh, <laughs> anywho, we start off the episode with the Apple family dealing business with Filthy Rich. They loaded the cart with the Apple, Zep Apple Jams and... Not Zep Apple Jams, right? It was Apple Cider, right? Actually, it's hard to tell because... And this is, this bugs me. The apples do not label their merchandise. Yeah. All them crates. Now it is Zap Apple Jam. It's got the, it is, it's the patented, uh, rainbow look to it, which I'm sure Rainbow Dash is still trying to file courts for copyright claim. <laughs> but. Yeah. And all the boxes are marked with an apple. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Like looking through here again. Yes. Um, what they were supposed to be uh, selling off to Rich here is Zep Apple Jams. But Apple Bloom, well, she be, what you call this, accidentally replacing them with the cider. So, nah, that's a bad thing to do. And, well, before she could even lie her way through it, the uh, siblings caught her red-handed and, well, uh, fixed the matter and... Filthy Rich here says, oh, um, I didn't really mean to, you know, right? Like, it was an accident. Like, he's afraid of what might happen here. So, hmm. And she's discovered. Oh, the tragedy. The horror. It seems that, well, Applejack's asking, why did you lie to us, Apple Bloom? I mean, that's not the Apple way. Like, you should know better than this. And, well, Granny Smith comes in and says that, oh, yo, Big Sister did the same thing also. Like, she lied her way, and it was still very terrible. And, yeah. After Filthy Rich comes back, picks it up, and he's just, he's practically shaking in terror as, as he says, I'm so sorry I took the wrong thing. I didn't mean to. Oh, oh God, don't take my knees. <laughs> oh, boys. Yeah, and then, well, story time with Granny Smith telling the story of how Young Applejack was a liar. And I do love the design for Young Applejack, these the scrawny legs. I mean, she just looks like such a <laughs> wireframe. And Big Mac has this not quite punk, but definitely spikier hair mane. And one big difference between the old and young Mac here is he talks a lot. <laughs> oh, boy, does that, he. That was one of the perks of this episode. Big Mac talks, although it gets annoying after a while, according to the story. Hey, no, but come on. At some point, she's just like a flipping tease. It's like, and that's how I became Big Macintosh. What? Why are you not telling us this story? I want to know that. Episode. Uh, and, and you then, just lead me on. Uh-huh. Well, one, one thing I need to point out is that Granny Smith here looks younger. Yeah, we might. Yeah, she's her, her mane is more kempt. 
She's a bit more mm-hmm. mobile. I, I, yeah, that too. I mean, she looks younger. I don't know. Maybe the artist did something with her facial expression, body language, or whatever it is. But she looks younger. No, she can walk around a lot more. She's definitely mm-hmm. sassier. Sass. Although, yeah. if you want to talk about looking truly young, let's talk about spoiled milk. Did anyone else envision the scene from Spaceballs where where the villain's like, give me what I want or I'll give her back her old nose? (gasps) (laughs) Oh, no. Nope. nope. Although in this case, I think Filthy Rich would actually say, yeah, she looks better with it. (laughs) Uh, Wow. Like, (laughs) they really want to make a statement out of this. Like, I don't mind her old look, but nah, she wants to have the pointy nose, mmm, yeah. And, yeah, and the reason why they go to town is to struck up business, right? They go to town, let's see, they were going into town to make run an errand, and they just happen to run into Filthy Rich and his fiance. And I think her nose got, so, or her schnoz got so uh, impacted because she's always shoving it in his face, trying to issue orders. <laughs> I could see that. Yep. It just became sort of permanently concave yeah and here's the other thing too we always mention that filthy rich here's a nice guy he is he is a really nice guy here always um talking politely to the people and trying to well do business with the apple family you know because he's smart and yeah talking about business applejack just promised that filthy rich here can sell um the cider first Yep, basically, uh, she struck a business deal on Granny's behalf, and Big Mac's like, AJ, no. So now she doesn't want to listen, which, that's kind of the weird thing in this, that Big Mac's all about not listening, but, uh, AJ just isn't, uh, she's not paying him any heat either, so I feel like, kind of trying to have it both ways. You're wrong to not listen to me, Big Mac, that's why I'm not listening to you. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, but this is a younger version of Applejack. Like, this is the young, ignorant Applejack where she thinks she's right and whatnot. The millennials. So, so every single teenager ever. I, I think I know what's right for me, but I really don't. Yep. Yep. And well, here goes again. Like, um, after they go back to the farm, uh, Applejack says she has a brilliant business deal with um, the rich family and Granny Smith says, nope, we don't sell the cider to them first because of how, after it ferments, like, it's not good at all. So we need to sell it first. If we sell it to the rich, there, well, we won't get anything much. Jam, jam, we don't care because that can stay on shelves for a very long time. So that's the basic explanation of why the Apple family don't sell to the rich first. And it makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. But that then that means well first off, when when Granny makes this decision, you see Big Mac sort of grin at a downtrodden AJ and it's like, you know, that's just sibling rivalry. There's there's a difference between mm-hmm. enjoying seeing someone suffer and just sort of feeling like, woo, the heat's off me for a change. <laughs> yep. Those sibling rivalries are there, and, well, I say that really makes the show feel more, well, natural. As natural as a stallion checking out his not-quite-girlfriend of the future. Yep, yep, yep. (laughs) Although I kind of joked with people, how do you know Big Mac's checking out Cheer Lee? Might be checking out that lavender unicorn. Well, at least we can say that he's straight as a whistle. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't know, there's always room to be bisexual. We mustn't jump to conclusions. The shippers will get uh, upset. True that. Yeah, really. Uh, true Isn't that, that right, Silver? Well, I've, na, na, I've na, seen na, your shipping. review. I've seen that review. You na, need na, to be na, shipped na. with her and, and her, her and her and her. And that's not even where the guys start. <laughs> oh, boys. Well, anywho... Uh, Applejack, uh, feeling, well, kind of crappy, goes to the rich family emporium and tries to break the bad news to the rich. And <laughs> uh, before she could even say anything, uh, Feel Free Rich shows the display case of 
the apple cider thingy and yeah like now we can see him get really angry about it like this is one of those cases where I don't blame him for this no, they, he was promised something and now they're suddenly reneging after he's invested time and energy who wouldn't get mad yeah, and yeah, before Big Mac can say anything to kind of settle the matter, AJ lies through her teeth again, saying that, ah, uh, yeah, no, 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 deal's still on, deal's still on, uh, we just need to plan something, yes. We go back home now, see ya. Oh, didn't she say Granny's <laughs> Granny is sick? Yeah, also that. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, she's, boys. she's she's setting it up. I understand what you guys mean about the yeah. liar revealed just being tried and true, but sometimes it's the escalation leading up to the confession that's the most fun. I mean, that's the... Mm-hmm. Usually the more extreme you have to be, the more fun the, the charade. And given mm-hmm. given that Applejack is about to go uh, pretty much trying to ruin Granny Smith's spine throughout this adventure, uh, that's pretty fun. Well, she is responsible, and you remember in season one about Granny needing to replace a hip? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because Applejack is just a flying tackles. Maybe they should have AJ for the Super Bowl. <laughs> Yay! Hoofball! Yeah! <laughs> Here comes an apple, she's going to hit you, look out for the <laughs> apple, Jack. <laughs> Oh, boys. But anywho, uh, so while discussing about how to solve this problem, we hear a knock on the door and it's revealed to be the rich or basically feels the rich and his fiance spoiled milk. And well, them being the nice uh, ponies come to visit Granny Smith, even bringing flowers. Yay, that's very nice of them. And before Granny Smith can... Uh, Ruindell plans, AJ slams the door and does a flying tackle to Granny Smith. And so even more years of bad hips. I'm just going to fast forward things here because it's a recent repeat of Granny Smith is almost showing her face to the rich. Oh no, tackle. Um, distract them while I distract Granny Smith and so on. And it escalates to, oh no, Granny Smith is in the hospital because of apple poisoning. Oh no. Oh no. She had I mean, too much applesauce that was expired. Oh no. And <laughs> and again, uh Filthy is just looking horrified. He's like, oh no, not my friend. It's like well, again, we we're supposed to not like this guy, right? I I feel like I'm getting mixed messages from the show. Well, I think you're not supposed to like the human version of it. Like the pony version. The pony not version. Not the comic not version. That the comic guy. If anything, he's probably like even in a time as of now, he's just a father who's caught up in his work. Then we also have the comic books uh, where he was running to be mayor of Ponyville and did a right awful job. And just like, wow, yeah, we're, we're really casting him as the villain in all this. That's the problem there too when it comes to the comics. But I think specifically the comic was at a time where it was in tandem with what was happening, which was the 2016 election. Oh, no, I, I, I will challenge you to a duel over this, sir. I will not besmirch Filthy Rich by talk, comparing him to Donald Trump. <laughs> I'm, not com- I'm not comparing, but I'm just saying the timing is impeccable. Like, they really made it so just to boost up sales. In terms of characteristics, that's something else, something utterly different. But still, you the general idea is there, but... I don't agree with it. The general idea for that comic was politics are awful, and then we had an election. Well, they got that part right. Uh, yeah. Anyway. But anywho, we're not going to yeah, talk about it. Yeah, we're not going to talk about it. Yeah. So anywho, we travel to Bonneville General. And yeah, in this scene here, oy, this, is, this is a fun one. Like, what, what can we spot here? Because I do notice a few things here, like, Derpy! Yay. With her eyes. I, actually, there's some heartbreaking images in this as well. I know. There's, there's a little filly <laughs> who's got her wing busted. There's a do, there's a unicorn whose horn was broken and he looks completely broken emotionally. Like, do unicorn horns grow back? I don't know. No, you glued him back. I don't know if you can. I mean, the poor guy looks just so sad. 
He's all like, he's being my horn, yo. <laughs> uh, I'm sure he'll do fine. But yeah, uh, in the Ponyville General, we see uh, Filthy Rich trying to visit Granny Smith in her room. But <laughs> the nurse here doesn't really know where she is because she's not in the room. Uh, filthy, you're being played like a fiddle. Uh, but still, Applejack's there and try to de-escalate and show directions. Yeah. And, oh god, her face. Uh, the animators love this face, don't they? <laughs> that face of, oh, I lied so much. What's going on? I don't know what's happening anymore. Of course, we missed one very important reference in this whole thing. Oh. A shot of the hallway where Granny Smith is walking across. And there are two little fillies. Identical, holding hooves, and just staring, ah. and just staring at you. Come play with us, Norman. Come play with us. Age restriction and stuff, not Kent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if you went to an elevator, there'd be a pool of blood just getting off. Oh, no. The, but still, yay. That's funny. The blood usually gets off at the fifth level. <laughs> and yeah, there's therapy and whatnot. And we are presented in the operating room where, yeah, it's like Big Mac's gonna get his chopped off. Yeah. Okay. And I, yep. And I do want to point out that the that the bone saw that one is designed for human hands. I'm I'm instantly distrustful, but it's got rust spots on it. <laughs> They're using what really? Yeah. Let's see here. Let's get a let's get a little. Oh my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no. Silver, silver. It's not rust spots. It's just bloody. It's blood spots. They didn't really clean it either, well. <laughs> either way, that is unsanitary. That is not what you do with proper medical equipment. This is something you use on tree limbs. It's not meant for a living, well, a pony. Trees are living beings, so. But I just, I call foul. I think, I think I need to write a strong letter to the Canterlot Department of Health. Well, after what they did for you, how could you? Dear Canterlot, thing of health, I don't know what you said. I call hacks. Hacks. <laughs> Actually, yeah, they, hacks. They, are, they are about to hack. I saw what you did there. <laughs> Until AJ pops in and stops everything and reveals that uh, Big Mac was under the sheets. And uh, there's a lot of what? From everybody in the medical center being, what is going on? To... Feel free rich saying, hey, I thought that was Granny Smith. To Granny Smith saying, what is going on here? And they reveal the whole thing where, ah, uh, we kind of lied and it escalated. I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. And Granny Smith threatening, feel free rich. If you dare, uh, go back on your promise, I will go tell your grandpappy and he won't be happy. I will threaten your familiar relations. And in the end, Applejack learns her lesson never to lie. And Big Mac is traumatized into silence for the rest of his life. Yeah. Could you just imagine, like, if Big Mac has his own family and he talks at home but never talks outside? Like, how would that be? Like, ugh. Now, son, let me tell you about the 87th time I saved the farm. Oh, God, no. Dad, shut up. Like, couldn't you just be quiet at home? Like, hang up. Ah! Of course, now, Norman, if you if you ask such a question, you'll have people saying who he would be, be raising that family alongside. Yes, well, <laughs> there's a few ponies out there from Cheryl Lee to that Andy Price one that Andy Price likes to ship with. What was the name? No. Ice cream something. Fleetfoot like? and Sweet Cream Scoops. Yeah, Sweet Cream. Sweet, uh, sweet, sweet Cream Scoops. Yeah, her. And, of course, uh, Marble Pie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot of shipping. Probably we'll talk about that sometime at the time. But anywho, nah, nah, uh, nah, near shipping, to the... Shipping, nah, 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 shipping. And we come back to the present day, and Apple Bloom couldn't believe it that, oh my goodness, like, oh my, Applejack, you're a liar? Well, like, wow, I, I would never lie to that degree. Wow, I'm glad I heard this story so I can tell you embarrassing stories. Ha 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 Now let's have some cider. Yay. I mean, apple juice. Yes, they're offer, they're offering, uh, booze to a miner. Oh, the shame of it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we forget to mention that, uh, I think starting from 
this episode that they re-edit the line of cider to juice. Because in Europe, in England, all cider is alcoholic. We, uh, us Americans, we have the diversity of a non-alcoholic drink, but. But I do remember hearing something that they're doing this for America too. So, yeah, we'll see. So, yep. And episode ends. Everybody learn their lesson, have a good laugh, and they will never lie again. Never again. So, yeah, that's the episode. And, well, let's go with Silver. Final thoughts on this episode. This episode is fun and harmless. It's just a bit of silliness. Uh, a look back at basically Applejack and Big Mac being the polar opposites of themselves. Uh, and like I say, I, I understand the distaste for the lie revealed story. But at the same time, I enjoy the escalation that comes with said story. Just the fun of watching AJ bury herself deeper and dragging Big Macintosh down with it, with her. Uh, but again, this episode is just such a tease because we, we almost hear why he's Big Macintosh, why he's got a cutie mark, all that good stuff. And none of it is brought forth episode. How could you? You tease. Why do you tease me so? <laughs> Oh, well, I, here's what I like about fan fiction writers is that they can just add in whatever they want, especially for the part where, you know, how Big Mac got his name. <laughs> and if you're really creative, you can just make it really fun. Or if you want to go for how he got his cutie mark, well, that's a very interesting story too. So fanfic writers go wild. So all in all, it's a fun episode. It's not like the highlight of season six, but it's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, Seppi, what about you? I think I'm still inclined. I don't like the liar reveal trope, but yeah, it can be fun in Silver's case. I don't know. I I guess I just didn't like it as much because I feel that internal frustration of, oh my god, just reveal it already. Like, I already know what's <laughs> going to happen. And even though it's fun to know the journey, this was not one of the cases for me where, you know, MLP is had that experience in the past to where it can take old tropes and make them fun. This wasn't one of those episodes for me. All right, all right. And as for me, i kind of okay with this episode. I wouldn't say I really like it or hate it, but this episode is one of those where huh, it's fun to watch. Um, the animations is good. The facial expression on the characters are fun. And... The background references from the two twins to Derpy walking with a blindfold on. Like, yeah, ever wondered why? Uh, there's a comic about it. She has Cyclops' eyes. So, yeah, no. So, it's all really fun to watch. But other than that, I do like to see history from the main characters. Like, I do hope that we get to see a fetishized history of how she came to Ponyville and how she was before that and well just the story about her and probably involving Zephyr that would be cool too or maybe we find out that at one point Fluttershy was a titan of domination who destroyed an entire land and that explains her, her demure and meaner now oh uh, yeah true that too you know yeah why not I demand a bloodbath <laughs> <laughs> oh you but anywho so that's our thoughts on this episode. And well, next week, next week, what will we be doing, Silver, for next week? Well, I believe it's, it's February and thus is the month of love. And so what better time mm -hmm. to talk about the princess of love? And I do believe that when, well, I'm going to jerry rig something because, um, when review shows usually come out on a Thursday, but this Valentine's, is on a Tuesday. So I'm going to jerry-rig the episode where next week's episode is going to come out on Valentine. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. Like, messing around with the timeline a bit. But hey, it's all for the fun of it. Like, love. So we're going to talk about the Crystal Empire Part 2. Specifically, Cadence. So, yay, shipping's ahoy. Wait, you can't ship her. She's already married. Infidelity. Oh, but Pony has herding. Don't you know? One male, multiple females. Mm. Is a thing. Is it? I have no idea. Call the harem. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. 
I've the Sapphire Hot Song. And we'll guys see you next week for a lovely dubby episode. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. So, Cadence. Hmm. I like her. Me. Die. No, don't don't actually die. That's a bad thing. Don't yeah, don't, do don't dye your hair to look like Cadence. It'll just look terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think it looks good on me. Yeah.